This is just going to be me and him and him complaining with your participation. So please don't be afraid to complain with me about the fact that kids these days have it so fucking easy. <laughs> You're streaming and your cloud servers and all that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, um... Jungle gym to get through all the... All just the wait, just house. wait. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, so, how to make you feel old. Oh, Dirty God. pair is considered vintage. Dirty pair came out the year I was born. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm older than him, so I can say that. Um... I will, I'm going to do a quick show of hands. Who, be, who believes I'm in my 30s? Who believes I'm in my 40s? Thank you. Wait, and I hate you all. <laughs> all the sleep. Who here votes 50s? <laughs> I will murder you. <laughs> I am over that. Hey, Tim, I can take her over to your house and show you how to do the set. <laughs> all right, so... Early anime releases were this. Who in this room does not know what a VHS is? <laughs> we actually had people at Colorado and had us raise her hand they didn't know it was. I was very <laughs> afraid. Uh, um, it's a uh, very hard service, right? Yeah. Well, that's what the porn industry said. It's not incorrect. So, one thing about VHS, just for anybody who doesn't know if you're a younger VHS user or anything like that, the only reason VHS won over Betamax, which were essentially the same thing, is the porn industry. The only reason that Blu-rays won over the Ultra HD disc, no, HD, DVD. HD DVD, was the porn industry. The reason why the internet works as well as it does is the porn industry. Well, everyone wanted their cell phone smaller, and then they found out they could watch porn on it, so now they want their cell phone bigger. <laughs> It's not more of a question, it's more of a statement. Most technological advancements that we've had in any kind of animated industry is porn. Is porn. <laughs> <laughs> well, in yeah. fact, when Bioshock Infinite came out, there was such an increase of the high quality of sex, uh, <laughs> rendering for animation because of that. And the same thing happened part. when Overwatch came out. Ah, well, so, did you know also that the reason hentai exists is because of Gundam? Yes. <laughs> so you need to thank your mech fans wholeheartedly. Yeah, there's a, if you don't know, there's a shower scene in one of the Gundam movies for the very first one, and people would go see the movie repeatedly just for that scene. And so they're like, wait, there's a market for this? So <laughs> anyone who, even though you know about VHS, which makes my heart very happy, I will, I, I still wonder when VHS is going to come back because now we have record players again. Why are you looking at me with that? Because you are a hipster. <laughs> so, as I have on the slide, we had to choose once upon a time, do we want it in the original Japanese language? Or did we want it in bad English? And what yeah. it topped this off too at the time, these subtitled DVDs cost five to ten dollars more than you the dub. VHS tapes. Yeah. VHS tapes. Yeah. Yeah. So do I want Evangelion in English for thirty dollars or do I want it in Japanese for thirty-five dollars? For two episodes. Two episodes! Two episodes! Oh. Yes. Oh, that's and so, a VHS tape could only have, at most, an hour to two hours of content because of the tape reels. So that's why when you all watch Titanic, I still have yet to see it, so I'm a virgin in some way. Um, it's not that good. It's not that good. Spoiler, the boat sinks. <laughs> I know. Anybody who is shocked by the ending of the movie, please read a history book. Um, but so if you wanted something longer, you had to buy multiple, I multiple items. So also, it was very hard to find. Kids these days can go to Target and buy anime yes. or manga. I had to pray to God that I could find a bootleg in Toronto, Canada just to be able to watch it. And remember our video stores when you rented that, most of the time the anime was put in the adult section because they didn't know what it was or it was stereotyped. Yes, um, what's up? Yeah, the thing about buying a certain number of uh, DVDs for like half a season, that hasn't changed. No, but let me raise this up. This is what... Lotus War was like on VHS. Thankfully, our friend who's in the back who claims I'm 50, so he's going to die soon. Um, at one point, you had to buy
identify each of these individually. And now this is just the OVA series. So you know, Record of Lois War has an OVA and a TV series. So okay. what does this do? If Don't you dare break <laughs> <bring it. laughs> I actually had a, uh, because I'm a teacher. Oh, no. oh, you're putting out these relics, so I'm getting a little bit. <laughs> yes, don't oh, just wait. I had, uh, as a teacher, I had a student one day bring in a cassette tape, and he's just like, yeah, I brought these in to work with my project. I guess they're old enough they could work with the ancient Colorado civilizations. And he starts pulling out the tape. He's like, what's this? And he's spinning it all around his body. Now, anybody who has ever used a VHS player, you die when that tape gets spun around in the VHS player. You hear it. Yeah. Uh, yes. What's up? I was just going to say, I teach an anime manga drawing class. I'm and I sorry. try to explain to them exactly how readily available that stuff is now compared to even when I was in middle school, which I'm kind of among the younger in this room. And I adore they, you still. They are, <laughs> they are absolutely flabbergasted. What's up? Uh, I just want to say that you, you said that video stores didn't know where, know where to put anime. Oh, when yes. I was a kid, uh, they put it in the kids' cartoon section. <laughs> oh, I went, actually, I went to a video store that did that, and when they had Ghost in the Shell in a kids' uh, section... Oh, my God! <laughs> I it was a kid's oh, my God! Uh, <laughs> See, I watched Nightmare on Elm Street when it came out, and I was four. Yeah. So, I have no... So now, we don't have the actual DVD set of Record of Lotus War, but when you had DVDs, just grab the Trouble Chocolate, because nobody knows what Trouble Chocolate is anyway, so it's really sad. It's a great, great series. Um, but this is what you had to do even here. So when you went to upgrade it to DVDs, you get like four episodes. You're like, I got four instead of two? Yes! Oh my God, it's 30 bucks still, but I got four episodes. And Japanese and English, both yes. on the same disc. Now, yeah, so now, now, best fucking part. Today, I bought this entire, not today here, because it's not this cheap here. Um, today, like this year, um, I bought the entire OVA and animated series of Record of Lotus War for $40. You spent 40 I got that on sale for 25 oh, sure. <laughs> But look at the size difference. This takes up half your shelf, this takes up an inch. Yeah, mine's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good thing in this case, though? Yes. Yeah. Then the last thing we get is oh television God. stations. When they did show anime, like USA, or Stars or so many others, it was really bad. And you didn't have UPN out here like we did. No, we did. We got UPN in like What's 97. What's up? I have one word. Four kids, one piece. Oh, oh. okay. Guilty pleasure. I actually enjoyed it because I was high most of the time. <laughs> but who remembers Sailor Moon when it aired on TV? I was in high school. I That's so sad. That just, that just I was very ten. Shut up. Okay, so why so expensive? The old adage of drugs would be cheaper. I can say from personal experience, because I'm a bad human being, yes. Yeah, they are cheaper. In fact, they still are. <laughs> Actually, no, not with it being legalized. In Colorado, Sorry, my the, the Colorado, the anime is cheaper than the marijuana. It's on the drugs. That's still all right. So I am so poor. This is sadly not the copy I have. I bought Master Mosquiton. If you've never seen it, you'll never be able to find it unless a really bad pirate copy. Or you actually are able to get lucky and find the release on blue on a DVD that I got. Yes. Or you import from Japan. And the Japanese import actually includes not the original six OVAs, does, but the TV series. Does as well. anybody know Media Play? Sad, sad media play. It went the way of the Toys R Us. Um, no. <laughs> FYE came back, though. No. I can sing the entire Toys R Us theme song because I'm sad. But this was my first anime VHS. I knew nothing about it. I bought it blindly. I, I watched it like 20 times because I wanted to get my money's worth for, 50, for 45 minutes. Two OV episodes. 45 minutes, incomplete. And I was like, it's still awesome. 
So with that, anybody who watched anime pre-2000 or pre-2005, I'm going to say, we had piracy. Yeah. 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 I love sailing the seven seas. <laughs> who used to go into IRC chat rooms, get their code, and download their anime? Okay, who knows Napster? <laughs> All right, who actually used Napster? Wow, oh my god, I'm so impressed. So, who gave their computer AIDS with LimeWire? <laughs> this was before Mac. So, now, I made the joke earlier that I had to go, we had to go to Toronto to get most of our anime. We that had was to, the only way to get Yu-Gi-Oh! uncut subtitle. Even yeah. though the subtitles were dreadful. Oh yeah, because they had the Inuyasha character names for the character oh names. Oh my god! <laughs> but, so, pirating, obviously you had Napster, Livemire, and, um, and, and just so you know, for all of you youngins who never did any of that, when you did Napster for 35 megabytes, one time it told me 65 years. <laughs> So be thankful that you now have one terabyte speed. And I was so happy when AOL finished its loading up screen. And this is back in the day when we had to pirate using dial-up internet. So if somebody wanted to use the phone, you're unplugging your internet so they can get on the phone. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for 54 kilobytes a second. <laughs> now when I download anything um, and it actually goes like 20 gigs a minute I was like yes thank you God because sadly not everything comes the internet has gone super saiyan <laughs> so another thing so yes yeah thank you for porn for that too so anytime a technological advancement just say thank you porn I may not watch you Oh, okay. <laughs> this is not for an anime convention, but I can tell you the shit I watched. Uh, the shit I watched is probably illegal today, but um, but this was the 90s. It was okay. Maybe. <laughs> the 90s was free reign on two mothers' things. But so I was so proud of myself in 2002, DBZ, or the Dragon Ball series. So, in 2002, I bought it the eBay. Oh, bro, well, that was before I actually knew you. Remember my, your mo my mom brought it? Oh, yeah, I used to work with his mom before I started dating him, and we've been together for 23, two, 22 and a half years. I still haven't killed him. It's amazing. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I... Impressive. Thank you, thank you. Murder has not happened, and I watch a lot of murder porn. Um, and I'm talking about investigation discovery. There's not... I, I've seen a snuff film, but that's not what I'm You about. also read too many books that have the same topic Just as well. because I have a collection of serial killer books. <laughs> wait, who's your, wait, off topic, who's your favorite? Jack the Ripper, duh. Nice. But in, okay, of known, I would say Son of Sam. Ed Kemper. <laughs> Actually, or I'd say Ed Gee, but that's just because it's a very You're tasty also, situation. You like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, of course you would. But back on topic, because I can go way too in serial killers, and it's probably that's not That's for the horror panel tonight. Yeah, that's the horror panel. Yes. Wait, but anyways. That? Nine o'clock. Oh, okay. So, in truth, I was proud of myself on eBay for $100. I got a, a CDR. Five CDRs. Five, oh yes, five CDRs. Oh God, God. Of the entire Dragon Ball series, from Dragon Ball to DBZ. Uh, not quite all of them. They were missing episodes throughout. I wouldn't know that though, because when I got it, I could not play any of the episodes. So I gave it to his mother, who is Satan, by the way. Um, <laughs> Don't insult Satan. <laughs> But anyway, so I gave it to his mom so he could watch, and he was the life of the party in his high school. And I graduated high school at this time, because once again, I'm old. And um, he's two years younger than me, so it's not like I'm robbing the cradle. But anyways, um, I was a cougar for a year and a half. It was so awesome. But anyways, um, tell him about your experience watching this. <laughs> to get to be able to actually read the subtitles and get somewhat of a watchable image, you had to watch it on a screen that was about that big. That was as far as you could extend it. It was half of the cell phone screen, basically. 
<laughs> that was the best way to actually be able to At read the subtitle. At least he has good eyesight because I would. Be and fucked. it was cool though because I, 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 at the time I didn't have a computer to fully play it on. I brought it to my friend's house, so we were like, "Ooh, this is where they left off on the dub." Okay, let's watch that. Oh man, there's like ten episodes missing. Okay, we'll just watch it to go from there. And that's how I watched the entire Boo Saga was through that because I got finally got tired of waiting for Cartoon Network. Oh. <laughs> so after they did Cell, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna finish the series through the Boo Saga. So I still knew nothing about Dragon Ball Z. I was so excited to spend my hard-earned money of seven dollars and fifty cents an hour. Y'all are lucky. I now make forty-five dollars an hour, so I'm not gonna complain. But um. And that takes a lot of education. Yes. Sorry. It does. <laughs> Let's not talk about the fact you're probably going to be dead before your student loans are paid off. Yes, that's very true, and that's not and that's not without getting my doctorate yet. So, um. Yeah, you can do it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I have four college degrees, so that's why I have a lot of student loans. Um. But I will do a panel again on job hunting if anybody wants to make what I just set, paid another person of three hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, I can tell you how. And it's not YouTube. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, so pirating was the only way you can do it. And now, then, once we got our high-speed internet, the inv invocation of BitTorrent happened. Oh, BitTorrent was great. Now, for a, gift, for a free prize, what, how did Crunchyroll originate? Yes. Started off as a piracy website, didn't it? Yep. So go ahead. So the get company your that you merchandise. so the company you all get anime from now the one that's now the largest U.S. anime company <laughs> was a pirate site. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they started out as fan subbers. They were a fan subber like Kiss Anime. So anybody who says Kiss Anime is the devil, you watch the devil. And now, <laughs> but it is. Now, yes, it is. now we have to cycle this back to porn again. <laughs> Faku, yeah. who God. originally was an, a bootleg doujin site that went legit thanks to J-List. So, next slide. Disney and anime. So, Disney... Which went, this partnership has ended in the last year, but this was very, very important at the time. It was very lucrative for the U.S. market. Because, in all honesty, yes, we can thank ADV. We can thank so many other companies for the anime, like Genion, Pioneer, uh, Media Blasters, even though they can never sell on Crunchyroll, uh, not Crunchyroll, right stuff again. Um, but if not for Disney, we wouldn't have a lot of the anime we have. And it really started with the Studio Ghibli movies. I thought it was Ghibli. I don't know anymore. Ghibli, Ghibli, Jigglypuff, Jigglypuff. It, it's, it's half a dozen of one, six of another. Nobody knows how to pronounce it right. And that's I don't why even I, think Hayao Miyazaki knows. And that's it. why I'm glad Shout Factory, now that they own them, just made G-Kids the label. Yeah, I, I, I will take that because I like gangster rap, so I'll go with it. Um, and I'm the whitest person you'll ever meet, so. Except for the guy who thinks I'm 50. <laughs> He's whiter than sour cream. Just for that, you're 60. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Timothy Garvey Curtis. <laughs> if that's not the whitest name you've ever heard, please tell me otherwise. Social security number is. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so Disney, Disney brought out almost the entirety of the collection of Studio Ghibli movies. And it was, they sold really well. Now, the one crappy part about it is you got really high name actors. Not to say the actors weren't great, because I love Howl's Movie Castle, and Christian Bale does a great Howl. But then you think of, uh, what's his name in Princess Mononoke? Um, Billy Bob Thornton, who is like very monotone. Well, that's because after Bad Santa, who wouldn't be? But you got to admit, Mark Hamill playing the villain in uh, Castle in the Sky was probably the best casting that they did. Yes. So... Well, Mark it, Hamill can do no wrong at this point. Oh, well, <laughs> yes. He could read the Bible and I'd still listen. <laughs> and I was raised Roman Catholic, so I had to go to war each Sunday. Um, but, um... And I'm not saying God is evil, so if you're leaving because I said God is evil, it's not... Oh, okay. <laughs> no worries, just water. Well, it's holy 
water, so um, I blessed it with Satan earlier, so you're good. <laughs> Actually, fun fact before I, because I'm good at veering off topic. Um, this is because I've worked in human resources for 20 years, so you can never stay on track. Um, anytime a Jehovah's Witness came over to my house or a Mo Mormon, I'm like, oh, great, let's talk about the Bible. I have the Holy Bible and the Satanic Bible. Which would you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> and they only one time did somebody willingly stay. <laughs> and, I, and I'm not a Satanist. I, I really am not. But I, I found it very hilarious. Um, All I got have to do is walk out in a cannibal corpse for Iron Maiden t-shirt and have the time to walk away. <laughs> yes, but that's because you're a hipster. <laughs> I have problems with hipsters only because he stopped being cool once he became one. <laughs> I adore you. But you like ghosts, so you like good bands. Wait, um, I'm, I'm, all right. All right, yeah, all right. But yeah, and getting back on topic, Disney really made it happen where we could have anime. Because if the overlords say it's okay, and they make cartoons, then it's got to be okay for everyone. And I think also helped with the success of uh, Spirit of the Way in 2002. When it yes. Ended up winning its Academy Award. So anime goes mainstream. This is where we get into the gatekeeping section of our panel. <laughs> so when Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon get products sold in American stores as party favors, and I bought them, I won't lie. And you had um, Toonami, which showed Gundam Wing. The worst Gundam ever. Hey, that is age. Yeah, I was going to say age is pretty bad. Hey, I just... Wait, Gundam Age exists? <laughs> I thought that was just a fever dream. <laughs> But then again, I've seen way too many theater dreams, and my guilty pleasure anime is High School of the Dead, so I have no right. Um, I'm sorry, when she, he, she has to use her tits as a way to hold that rifle, I am like, this is pure cinema. <laughs> Orson Welles has nothing on this. <laughs> What's up, man? I, I, I would like to point out another guilty pleasure anime. What? Penny and Stocking. Yes! Oh, yes. 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 There's supposed to be a season two finally. Fire. I'm so ready. Well, tap me. <laughs> but the reason I chose this particular picture is Grandma saying kids these days run their mouths like hot shit. <laughs> when I listen to like his students say, why can't we have Jujutsu Kaisen in our fourth grade classroom? It's like, no! Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, you bastard! I already had to pull one book because somebody, a parent, some, one of my kids was like, look, it's Goku's D. Hey, look, over here, going to everyone. Like, okay, now I gotta pull it. <laughs> and then other kids are like, why can't we have Dragon Ball? Because you can't handle dicks maturely. <laughs> I learned from 22 years of how to handle dicks maturely. <laughs> you just ignore them. But, um, so, now we do have a lot of gatekeepers, and that's the one reason why I talk about this, because gatekeeping is not right. Though it is okay to gatekeep if you're a Macross fan, because Harmony Gold are assholes. Yeah. Yes, you can gatekeep Robotech all you want. <laughs> um, but, I, I was on... A couple of months ago, or actually last year, I saw this dude saying, well, if you watch Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, Naruto, Bleach, It was that Twitter post I showed you. And he's like, if you don't, if you watch those, you're not real anime fans. I was like, okay, so fuck my childhood? Right. Yeah, and because, so... Because it's normie stuff. Well, unquote. and it's important to know where we all start. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully she's not kicking me out for swearing. <laughs> no, but it's not anti stuff. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so gatekeeping is not cool. Yes, we're old. Yes, we've seen everything. But we have to remember that anime is for everyone. And because of that, this is where kids are evil. <laughs> Streaming is everywhere. You can turn on Netflix, Hulu. Peacock, um, Paramount, HBO Max. And then Crunchyroll now has 90%. This is actually true. Crunchyroll now owns 90% of the anime okay. streaming. What's up? Um, I don't know about that. This is, this is possibly an unpopular opinion, but I think there should be some very, very, very small amount of gatekeeping because um, we want as much people coming to the community as possible, yes. But we don't want to have someone come in like one episode of, say, Dragon Ball, decide they hate everything about it, and then they decide to get 
the position of power and change into something it never was. Unfortunately, that's that's a risk that will happen. That's a risk that happened with the video game industry. Because if you think about it, due to the video game industry, having one person exactly like that come in and change everything, it's going to happen. Unfor well, and if you think, that's why we had all of these anime studios, and most of them have dissolved, like CPN, Manga Entertainment. ADV had to rebrand as the Sentai Filmworks. Sentai Filmworks, Kraken. Disco Tech. They had to separate into three separate. No, Disco Tech's not. 80. Oh, I thought it was. No, but nevertheless, Disco Tech was founded by some of the former members of Anime News Network. The problem with gatekeeping, and is your, the, you just shouldn't gatekeep in general. Well, yeah, everyone. The one thing great thing about anime is no matter what you are, there's always gonna be one series you're gonna fall in love with. It doesn't matter. It covers every genre imaginable. You might be the, like, say, oh, I hate animation entirely. You will still eventually find that one series that goes, that really resonates with you. I had one friend who was like, nah, animation's just not for me. Animation's not for me. It's not for me. For like two years. And then he saw Cowboy Bebop. And he's like, I really liked Cowboy Bebop. That was really good. But he has never liked any other anime outside of Cowboy Bebop. Whoa. And it's like, hey, you know what? You found an anime that clicks with you. That is amazing. You're part of the fandom. And I never knew about shoujo anime until Fruits Basket came out. And Fruits Basket was a complete experiment by Funimation. They were never going to go into the shoujo market because they didn't think it could sell in America. And it was that experiment that opened up the floodgates. And that's also the reason why, because they put seven episodes on a disc and it sold really well, they're like, oh, people will buy discs with more episodes on it, even though the price is higher. We yes. should do this more often. Yes. I just want to make a, make a point for everybody here. Uh, we all remember our first love. Sure. We all remember <laughs> what our first series was. And it doesn't matter what that first series was. We all cherish our first love. And that first love opened that door. When that door opened, it opened more doors. More doors opened. And what does that do? You find people who share their first love and their second love with you. And what, what are we doing right here, right now? We're all sharing that. It, that's exactly yeah. it. The hobbits would love an easy way to get to Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, what's up? What was your first love? Sailor Moon. Ah! <laughs> In all honesty, that was like I, I watched Gigantor, I watched I mean, Speed Racer, I watched so many shows. But the first anime that I knowingly watched was in 1994 when Sailor Moon aired at 4:30 in the morning on Fox Kids, <laughs> and it was Monday through Friday. And I, as a high school student, I'm still amazed. I got up to watch it every day and that's and i understand where you're coming from with the position of power the problem is we're already in that problem we already have that with sony buying funimation and then crunchyroll we're already there because they hold legitimately in the united states the biggest they have 90 percent of the market now that they own right stuff yeah, they have a monopoly because they have ADV. No, they, ADV, no, no. so... Sentai or not ADV, I mean... Crunchyroll. No, no, no. Um, fate. Fate, fate. Aniplex. Aniplex. I just have to point to him because he loves fate. <laughs> but, um... I, I, I'm still confused. So but, what, what is the other market then? Is the only is the other 10% like... Discotech. High Dive. Like, uh, high Dive is... Um, high Dive is Sentai Filmworks and Kraken yeah. Entertainment. So is it just that... <laughs> Too. Pretty much, yes. Uh, well, and, and Netflix. Viz. And Media Blasters and Viz. And then Netflix. Well, Viz is Neon. Uh, no, Neon. Viz is now co Viz has now partially become part of Netflix. Yes. Oh. Because um, Warner Brothers is selling off Viz. Yep, and Netflix bought them. Because of so we're never going to get physical media of anything anymore. Well, I'm sure once Netflix goes under, we'll get that back. <laughs> um, Netflix hasn't gone under yet, so I yes. think it's... <laughs> they, and they, but they are just getting under the new reptiles, though. Wait. Their DVD rental is still going it on? It ended today. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know that still existed. So if you still have a DVD rental account from Netflix, um, you're going to be getting 10 random DVDs in the mail as they get rid of them. What? No, <laughs> the hard parts. So this slide, I think, just, well, it segues into our panel for in like 30 minutes or an, an hour. hour. Um, 
why am I getting older, but the anime characters stay the same age? I have, how many people have seen Dazed and Confused? Wow. I now feel old. This More is my favorite movie from the 90s. So Matthew McConaughey really got his start. It was a complete fluke he got into the movie. Um, but really, the one challenge that many anime fans do face as they get older is there's not a lot of anime that's, that ages up with you. It's not like... So you will see a lot of older anime fans, <laughs> Timothy, um, who will start backing away from anime just because it doesn't speak to them anymore. I love you, Timmy. You are my favorite second husband. I'm um, a <laughs> six-year-old. <laughs> oh, not, yeah, that's why I'm not. Anymore. You're not going to get your house cleaned again by her at this rate. No. <laughs> but, but that's why there was a series so, about, actually now it's 10 years old, that really resonated with older, older audiences called Tiger and Bunny that came out. Yes. Because the main character was a guy in his 40, uh, early 40s as the main protagonist that gets teamed up with a new 20-year-old character and they just did a really interesting dynamic but their goal was this show is geared towards people who grew up on anime that feel alienated now because everything is focusing on younger characters. And this is not to say anime fans can't, like older anime fans in their 30s, 40s, 50s and even beyond because um, I have many friends. My mom watches Ranma one half. So well, and you yeah. like way of the house husband, just for the older protagonist. And yes. you have a house husband. He has a, I was gonna say he has a full time job now, but he was my tatsu. Um, <laughs> and I have a Roomba and a cat as well, so we're getting super close. Um, you just need the Shiba Inu yes. now. Um, is that because it's, it's not being made in Japan, or that it's not being brought? It's kind of a column A, column B. For what? For older anime. Like, we have Emma, we have um, Servant Service. There's a the Spy Family is a great older anime series. And so sometimes it's because it's not being, like, there's not enough of an interest or, like, a push to have it. And sometimes they think there's not going to be any interest in purchasing it. Um, so a lot of these licenses for these shows, they end up with a niche market where no Zomi which was right stuff or um discotech would be really the only ones that will go out of their way to get the license and, so, and sometimes there's anime that anime series that people studios are like oh we're, it's not worth buying at the full price right now and then years later they'll get a discount like funimation had bought or to, like out, years after it was out the series called kenichi the mightiest disciple yes. they bought the license for cheap and it sold in america like hotcakes so they made I think it was like five profit. times the amount back that they paid on the license because they didn't pay much for the license. I will admit it is getting better. We are getting more for older crowds because I think a lot of older anime fans are liking it. And well, studios. I think. And but at the same gotta... time, uh, just real quick, as at the same time, it's still important to know you don't have to stop liking old anime. I still okay. watch Sailor Moon. I, like, I'm super excited Sailor Stars finally came to the U.S. And then yes. Marcus and I really love our discotheque collection because they bring out a lot of the stuff that him and I really target for watching. Like God, I, Mars. <laughs> like, to, uh, last year I got into Loop on the Third, which is and why I'm doing a panel What's later. your question? Uh, to kind of follow up on the yeah. concept, so is this anime only or is manga included? Is manga is included as well. Alright, so is it just because they have, like, like a shonen jumps, but, like, in different age groups over Yeah, there. they have like Jose, Sinan. So they're not being translated to so Not all the time. No. What's also happening with that too is that some of the mangakas do not want their material published in any other languages other than Korean and Japanese. Just because they... Yep. Yep. Yes. Well, that's been the biggest thing is... Uh, and then there's a lot now that the companies will license, but because there's not a market, they'll just do a digital only version of that manga. Which is and, and Domestic Girlfriend has become much, the best selling digital manga of all time. As yes, much as I love ca being caught up on One Piece, I didn't start touching di the digital version until I ran out of volumes. At, when I finished volume 100, I was like, I can't wait anymore, I need to catch up. Now the other challenge with aging in anime <laughs> is, um, the, some of the characters in 2023 standards, or even 2022, and so on and so forth, they are super problematic these days. When you look at them with the cancel culture lens on, you're like, Master oh. Roshi? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
And wow. and so there are times where you want to talk about like certain series. Like I listened to One Week by the Bare Naked Ladies, and they have the lyric about Sailor Moon about the boom anime babes. I'm like, they're 14, <laughs> and I'm like, I understand this song is like really old, but it's just like when you look at it and you're like, oh, should I? And you have to kind of separate yourself from it. And that's the challenge when you're aging with anime is you have to like also take your creepy self out of it and just enjoy it for what it is. Yes. Um, I, one of my favorite disclaimers of all time was actually for a, an old Disney animated short um, that basically disclaimed beforehand this cartoon reflects some um, old-fashioned racism Oh, values. is it the... The Song um, of the South. Yes. Right. right. And, right. But it also it um, kind of really well described like the dual thing before while we can still appreciate it for its entertainment value while acknowledging that these values no longer hold true. Well, it's the same thing with the movie Gone with the Wind. Right, right. Yes. It's an incredible film and I, and I can't stop watching it because the... Um, the I can't remember her name. It's going to drive me Scott nuts. Johansson. Huh? No, it's not um, Hattie McDaniel? Hattie asking. McDaniel. Thank First African-American woman in history won an Oscar and she could not be present without them sneaking her yeah. in to win her Oscar and sneak right out immediately after. She could not get the celebration she deserved because of racism in America. And when you watch her performance, it's incredible. And it's so tragic that we have to celebrate someone who many, many, many decades later who could never be celebrated in her time. The way I also look at the aging stuff is, uh, it's like you have to look at the period it was made. Like there are movies that we have watched that have, because I'm a huge film noir fan, so Half of our movie collection is before we were born. Before our parents were born half the time. Well, actually, years And are there are things that's like, wow, but you have to think about the context of what it was made in. So it's like, okay, that's messed up. This is why this needs to exist in this way so we can learn not to do that mistake. And on the flip side, which she knows, I'm a big fan of exploitation style films from the 60s through the 80s. Most of those films could not get made today because of our culture. So even in anime, it's like, you still need to take the context of this is wrong, but this is how it was back then. Now, have we changed our viewpoints from it back then of what was okay? We have a... Yeah, what's your question, my friend? So it actually wasn't a question. It was to add on to something you were saying about, like, oh, it's pretty community, like, setting up a 14-year-old. Mm -hmm. So we have actually discussed this in depth, but we came to the conclusion that if you fell in love with them when you were their age, yes. it is okay. But if you go in and you watch a high school thing and you're sexualizing these high schoolers and you're, like, 30, that's not okay. But if you fell in love with, like, I fell in love with Rainbow to Welcome for free when I was, I think, 17. So, it's, But I, at the same time, you can't deny somebody at the age of 30 from still watching, oh, like, no, free. No, no, I'm not saying no, deny not. it. I'm saying oh, it's not okay. okay to sexualize them when you are twice their age. Oh, However, yes. Yes. I fell in love with them when I was 17. I'm not 27. So, I was going to say, you don't look 27, but then I was like, I, wait, I, she has a mask. I'm from work right now because I know people from work are going to be here and I fall off the air. Like, <laughs> I, okay, I respect you. Okay, but, but the point is, if you fell in love with them when you were around their age, and it was their acceptable age gap at that time, for you to be sexually attracted to them, that is okay. Because they don't age, you do. So that, that is acceptable. However, if me, now, at 27 years old, watches free and falls in love and sits over this, like, if, like, if I hadn't seen it, I didn't know, and I was like, oh, shirtless boys, I'm like, <laughs> Like, that's, that's... Well, it's like me watching Harry Potter when I, when the Tom Felton grew up like a foot and a half, I was like, that guy looks so good now. I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, yeah, so it's like, how do we deal with it? Or, uh, is that something to be addressed in this, or is this beyond the scope of this concept? I'm like, Okay, the difference between Harry Potter and, and the anime is that well, Harry Potter has actual real kids' well, romance attached to the faces, yes. whereas anime, unless they do a live action, is 100% mm -hmm. fictional characters. Oh, I can't wait till Netflix finishes One Piece and everyone's an old man. <laughs> 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 On one flip side, before I go to the next slide, is 
there's not just problematic characters when you come with H. There's also problematic characters when you look at the LGBTQIA plus community. Yeah. How many people have seen Sorcerer Hunters? I'm possibly here right now. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought so. Um, I was like, I, you looked familiar with the cosplay, but when Carrot's younger brother, oh God, Marin. Marin. Marin is a very flamboyant character. People treated him as a joke in the series. And then if you think about so many other flamboyant or gay-like characters, they treated them terribly. I think Tiger and Bunny's been one of the few anime that actually has a positive representation yeah. of it. Yeah, with Fire, Fire Emblem. Emblem is awesome. Fire but yeah, we there was a loop on the third movie we watched not too long ago where they did have a very flamboyant character, and it was, that character was there as a joke. Yes, yes. Okay, y'all want to talk about horrible representation? Come about Island Wings. I, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. But it's it's a problem, and and you also have to think um, for all of its progressiveness with Japan or even America. America is nowhere near exempt because we are taking away reproductive rights. Um, and I'm not going to get into a political speech because I that's not time or place. But it's important that. With Japan, they have Yuri, Yaoi, BL, GL, and at the same time, for anybody who's watched live action, we watch shows called Tokusatsu. Easy explanation is Power Rangers original. But we didn't get until Wizard, which was what year? 2013? Yeah. It so was 2013, there. our first transgender character and it that was, was a character and the main it was character. until zero one we got our first non-binary character which was in what year covid year 2020 the covid century so and then <laughs> this year for another show which may be translated in Amer of power rangers in america we have our first non-binary ranger ranger and this is over 50 years since the franchise for power rangers in japan started which Almost is called 50 Super years which is called Super Sentai. So if you think about that, think about how long it's taking them well, to catch up even, in other media. Even in mental health aspects, mm -hmm. a lot of ja Japanese media prom like uses mentally, uh, def like mentally. Uh, well, basically, yeah. autism is villainized in a lot of Japanese media, except for in Zeta Gundam. Now, the last slide of this panel, we are never too old for anime. You should not feel uncomfortable to watch anime. That's the one thing I really do enjoy seeing at anime conventions. I, I see so many people who are 13, 14, 15, 16. I see so many people in their 50s, 60s. I've, we have a friend who brings his dad who watches anime who's in his 80s. Yeah. Never be afraid to continue watching what you are. Never be afraid to what enjoy you are or what, you like. what you like. I love horror movies. I, um, I watch horror movies way too much. It's very concerning. But um, so enjoy what you like. And that's the really, that's the message about this panel. Yes, it's to complain about how kids have it way too easy, how things are so different than they once were, because you know the good old days. I can't believe I'm at that age now where I can now say back in my day. Oh, no. <laughs> but at the same like the time, just... when somebody says 20 years ago, I saw this meme that I really, I was like, wait, they're right. When somebody says 20 years ago, I still think they're talking about the 1990s, not yeah, the year yes, 2000. Yeah, yeah. 20 years ago was the 80s. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm like, but now when I listen to music, like, BTS, I, I love BTS, so I'm not saying anything wrong. But I'm like, back in my day, we never had anything like this. Or just back in my day, rock music was rock. And I'm like, oh my God, I remember, am my parents. Just remember, <laughs> Foo Fighters is classic rock now. I know. Well, it was always classic dad rock. It was never cool. Okay, when I heard Marilyn Manson on classic rock, I'm like, oh, no. my life has now hit the, the plateau. I am... I'm at the top, it goes downhill for me. <laughs> um, that's why I lie about my age. I'm 27 plus shipping and handling. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it gets more expensive every year. And if it um, wasn't for the gray in my beard, people would still think I'm in my late 20s. So, 
one of my one of the best Simpsons quotes for like the whole thing like this is Abe Simpson says to Homer, "I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what it, what I'm with isn't it anymore, and what it's it seems weird and scary will happen to you." <laughs> but at the end of it all, just have fun, and when you see these. 16 year olds, and I love you 16, well, that sounds creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you 16 year olds. I appreciate 16 year olds watching anime. I am so jealous that it's cool for you to watch anime. We were seeing as the nerds in high school that got picked on. Oh, please, that was you. I was one of the cool kids who had the hide that I watched anime just so I could still have my cred. <laughs> Don't See, I didn't. She was a poser. I, I, <laughs> you met one friend who was on a sports team that I hung out with rarely. He unveiled the truth. He. he remember? Poser. <laughs> Me, on the other hand, I didn't care. I didn't hide it. I actually, my dad had access to the internet at home, so. He, at work, so he'd bring me things of what would happen in like Dragon Ball, like the entire series. So I had classmates that would come at me, so what was it you said that happened in this Dragon Ball GT series? And I so I'm like, yeah, sell, cool. I had to sell cigarettes to stay with my crap. Um, yes? Uh, I got into Sailor Moon when I was in high school in the late 90s, and I, I, I had to hide because some of the things I got called well, so the reason why I hit it is because I already had enough things against yeah. me that, like, coming from the wrong side of the tracks, having a family that had no money, if I, and uh, there's a laundry list, if I said, oh yeah, I like anime too, oh my god, I, every stereotype that was out there, I already had. I did not want to add another stereotype because I, I was bullied when I was 13 to the point where, um, and this is not 18 plus panel, so I'm not going to explain because that's not the time or place. But I'm still here today, so that's the important part. But I was bullied so much that I had to hide everything I did that was uncool. So kids these days, and I don't mean to say it in a negative, but any kid who can proudly walk into their school and say they like anime, I say in my mind, you know what? It was kind of worth it that I kind of had to go through that crap. Because yeah, it sucked for me, but at least I persevered where many others may not have at times, and all of you did. We all persevered to ensure that we gave a foundation for kids to like what they like, to be who they are, to be able to walk into a school and say they are they or them, or she or they. And to and I, I'm not gonna go on a soapbox, but I just I think it's important to say we need to be proud of ourselves. We went through a lot of crap to be anime fans. And the fact that this convention is 26 cons old really says that we worked hard, each and every one of us. And we need to not take ourselves for granted. We need to not stop being fans just because we think we're getting old. And if somebody is going to look at us like we're creepy for being old, just let them. Let them. Let them. Loss. Get off my lawn. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I. I'm, Every time I have, a, I have a new student or I have a new class, I, the way I introduce myself is I tell them who I am. I say, hey, I'm originally from New York, I'm a gamer, comic book, anime, manga, movie nerd, YouTuber, action figure collector, and sometimes kids are like, oh, I love anime. Like, I've got six kids that are always have, uh, draw, they're drawing Goku every day when they shouldn't be, but <laughs> I've got my Hero Academia fans in there. I, I, that, and what, one year, a third grader pulled out a... Um, Oh my god, Ma Mag Madoka Magica art book that was from Japan. I still worry about that. But <laughs> yes. I was going to say, similarly, like, with my MA manga drawing class, um, I found that it actually helps me because I get to uh, help the parents then connect with their kids because mm -hmm. the parents don't have that base knowledge. They don't under really understand what their kids are watching. So they have someone that's 
helps bridge that age gap for them so that they can better connect with their kids and understand. Exactly. Well, I had um, one of my fourth graders this year, when I was a substitute teacher, I was subbing for a first grade classroom. And in the sub plans, you have this one girl on there. Watch out for her. She's going to be your most difficult student. Keep an eye out. And she had a Bakugo figuring on her desk. So I'm walking by. I was like, oh, Bakugo. She's like, you know what, who this is? I said, yes, my hero is. She's like, so, and that day the class was being disruptive, and she's just like, I am so sorry, Mr. Hanks, that our class does not usually act like this. Oh. <laughs> and she was my best student all day. So when she found out I was going to be her fourth grade teacher, she was ecstatic. Oh, oh and, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, and even her dad, during uh, back to school night, came and he's like, yeah, usually she has a problem adapting to a new classroom every year, but she was so excited you were being her teacher. Oh, yeah. It makes a difference to them. Oh, that's yeah. the most it exciting really part does. about seeing the older fan in the anime community is like you get to be that guiding post. I, like, yeah, I've got a student who's here today, and, I'm, I'm and you really underestimate how good that feels I'm to be minutes. that person. I that think it saves yeah. space for other younger fans, and yeah. and that's and that's really the end of it. That's why this is a joke panel, but it's just really to empower everyone to still be happy with who they are. And because we already, when you get older, we, re, we now know what our parents went through with paying bills, having to rob Peter to pay Paul, not another religious reference, it's just the easiest one out having there. Having to buy a new car because your engine's dying? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, so it's like, as a fourth like fourth grader, when you're dealing with your, with the anime series that are for teens, and they're dealing with things like the sexual or really common with anime shows, the Sumerians. And then to have kids that think, I gotta showcase my affection by hitting people. Well, let's do that. <laughs> We do not, we are very selective of the series that we bring into a classroom. Yeah, I try to be selective. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, I already have a student who does hit everyone because he's never been around kids his own age outside of his hockey team. So all he knows is how he reacts with his hockey team. So he's always chest bumping up other students and everything because that's all he knows. He has never been in a public school before. So it is very hard, but at the same time, and I know we're at time, so any, and I, I want to make sure that we are fair to the next panel as well. Um, but I guess if anybody has any other questions, let's go ahead and take it outside so we don't have anyone else. I, I already feel like I'm on the naughty list. But thank you very much <laughs> thank you. for joining us.